Hey guys. All right, so hopefully you used um, your study guide and and I know it was a little bit different whether you were doing it um, and working on it in class or if you're working on it online. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, you guys knew to go back through your Google Slides um, or use your note packet or both. I mean, that's what it's there for. Um, your note packet should guide you as, as a textbook would because that's what I'm building my PowerPoints off of. That's what I build my tests and quizzes off of. So hopefully you utilize that and were able to review with yourself as you went through it. Um, so today's test uh, kind of touches on every single unit, um, some units more than others. But hopefully you use that time to go through and review and prepare for your midterm. Um, you know, making sure that you hit the key pieces. Um, you know, knowing that during industrialization, um, you've got Rockefeller with Standard Oil, you've got uh, Carnegie with Steel, you've got JP, JP Morgan with a banking system, Vanderbilt with um, with railroads, you know that we surpass Great Britain as being this industrial leader. Um, you know, think about your inventors that Alexander Graham Bell gives us the telephone, Thomas Edison gives us the light bulb. Um, the Bessemer process is how Carnegie figured out how to make a, a cheaper, higher grade steel so we could mass produce steel. Um, think about the fact that um, railroads are, are being built for us to create the transcontinental railroad and that's why we need time zones to make sure that the, the train is running on time um, you know make sure that you are aware of um, you know what, what was the name of, of these big business owners that we called them captains of captains of industry uh, or robber barons uh, make sure you know who muckrakers are. Muckrakers are those journalists that are exposing bad stuff like Ida Tarbell and Upton Sinclair uh, and Lincoln Steffens. And that Upton Sinclair is the one that writes um, the book The Jungle exposing the meatpacking plant, which is how we get the FDA and the Food and Drug Act. Um, make sure you know that um, what the difference is that a company that controls all the supply of a product is talking about a monopoly um, but if it asks you um, what are other companies that exist only to to control a company those are holding companies they don't actually produce anything they're just there to keep that other company away from being labeled as a trust yeah so that they're kind of a, a, a beard, if you will, a cover up. So anyway, um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other big stuff to make sure that you're ready to rock and roll for today. Uh, think about workers, workers rights, um, you know, knowing how bad the conditions were, low pay, long hours. And that's why we created uh, labor unions. Um, Knights of Labor took anybody in the very beginning, um, but it took, um, it took the uh, AFL, the American Federation of Labor, to come in um, and only allow skilled workers. So that was a difference. Um, you know, they used a lot of strikes and things like that. But unfortunately, the government is only supporting big business. So a lot of times they would push through a court injunction and force workers to go back to work. Um, sometimes they would... Um, send in or the government would send in federal troops in favor of big business because they need um, business to keep making us money and keep going so they can't afford for us to stop uh, you know what what is the theory that um, that it's the survival of the fittest that you know the best businesses will survive well that is social Darwinism um, but what about if you are encouraged to help those that are less fortunate? That is the social gospel movement, and it'll ask you about both of those. Um, think about the fact that uh, Knights of Labor takes anybody in that first labor union. Um, the industrial movement is going to be led by Eugene V. Debs, which is important because he's also going to run as a socialist candidate for president later on. Um, Think about the fact that, um, let's see, hold on, there's another question I had. Oh, uh, a method of forming a big business or a monopoly with uh, joining other businesses together, right? Forming a trust. 
Uh, the Interstate Commerce Act is first created to regulate the railroads. Um, let's see, uh, the leaders, the leader of the AFL is, uh, is Samuel Gompers. Um, let's see, laissez-faire is talking about how the government should have hands off of business. Um, horizontal integration is where a company uh, owns and controls all the same industry. They buy up like all the mom and pop oil refineries like Rockefeller, or if they buy up all pieces that connect to their business, that's vertical integration. That's what uh, Carnegie does with his business. Um, let's see. Jim Crow laws, laws that are uh, restricting blacks. And as far as that goes, um, how are blacks being restricted uh, to voting? Uh, think about the grandfather clause, poll taxes, literacy tests. Um, what's the name of the reformers in the 1900s that were trying to make changes? Those are progressives. Uh, think about Susan B. Anthony, who tried to push for women's suffrage, women's right to vote. Um, think about your vocabulary. Imperialism um, is talking about uh, having colonies, um, whereas isolationism is talking about um, closing off and focusing just on us, just on the United States. Um, let's see. Hold on. There was another thing that I was going to mention. Um, what about the, the Granger? I um, uh, forgot my... Never mind. Forget that. I don't know where I was going with that question. It wasn't. It was something else that I was thinking of, I guess. Uh, think about presidents. All right. Let's think about presidents. And oh, that's what it was. It was a court case. Plessy versus Ferguson comes out to make segregation legal. It says separate but equal. Right. Even though nothing was actually equal. Um, let's talk about presidents. All right. Um, you've got 1896, William McKinley comes in, that's when we get into our imperialism phase, that's when we go to uh, war with Spain, uh, the Spanish-American War. Um, during his second term in office, McKinley is going to get assassinated, and it's going to be Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, that takes his place, and he has his big stick policy, you know, um, he's going to push for us to get the canal in Panama, he's going to encourage the Panamanese to have a revolution so that uh, later, after they're independent, uh, we can build a canal. Um, we have a lot of um, uh, new changes that come during the progressives' uh, time, right? We've got La Robert La Follette that pushes for recalls and initiatives and referendums. Um, we've got, let's see, African Americans that are coming in, um, pushing for civil rights. We've got Booker T. Washington, who is pushing for, uh, better education for African Americans so they can get better jobs, and he creates the Tuskegee Institute. Um, Roosevelt's going to be president for a couple of terms. He creates his square deal policy. He also creates the Roosevelt Corollary, uh, which pretty much says that uh, we will intervene with anybody that tries to mess up things in our neighborhood, in our hemisphere. Um, the progressives are continuing to fight uh, to go against big business, fight for rights for the common man. Um, Roosevelt Square Deal is, is a lot of it's going after trust and trust busting and going after these big companies. Uh, he's going to be the first president to stand up for the people in the 1902 coal strike. Uh, he was also part of the Rough Riders that fought um, going up San Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War. Uh, don't forget, after the Spanish-American War, we get the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Guam as territories. Um, we have John Hay, who goes to China and works out the open door policy to open up the doors to trade with China. Um, we have uh, Alfred Mann, who writes his book about creating a large navy to be able to protect, uh, protect us. Um, let's see. Let's kind of switch over and do a little World War I and 1920s stuff, which hopefully you should be more familiar with, right? So... Uh, we do isolate ourselves in the very beginning. We know it is the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand from Austria-Hungary that gets everything going. Uh, the Allied ships start up forming pretty quickly. You've got the Central Powers with Germany, Austria-Hungary, Ottoman Empire. You've got the uh, the Allies 
um, which are going to be Great Britain, France, and Russia in the very beginning. Russia does come out of the war because of their civil war in 1917, which is about the same time that we enter into the war. Um, Woodrow Wilson's going to get us uh, in and out of World War I. Uh, the Zimmerman Note is trying to engage Mexico in getting involved and tell them that if they pick a fight with us, uh, they'll get rewarded. We start up the Selective Service Act, which is the draft. Uh, we change everything into wartime production with the War Industries Board. Um, we start up the Espionage and Sedition Act to pretty much stop anybody from talking and criticizing the government during the time of war. Uh, which we also have a court case, Schnick versus the U.S., which is talking about clear and present danger, um, that you cannot dis discourage anyone uh, to volunteer and assist, especially during a time of war. We know that Wilson comes up with this 14-point peace plan, most of which is ignored. Uh, the Red Scare comes in afterwards, which is us going on a witch hunt for communist supporters. Um, Harding is going to push for the return to normalcy, to go back to how things were before the war, go back to isolating ourselves. We start the National um, Origins Act, limiting immigrants, especially from certain countries. Harding gets in trouble because of the Teapot Dome scandal. Uh, we've got Flappers, the modern woman of the 1920s, Charles Lindbergh, who's known for flying across the Atlantic, the Scopes Trial, first teacher teaching evolution. Um, Marcus Garvey in the 1920s pushes his Back to Africa movement, trying to stand up for civil rights. Uh, new amendments, uh, 17 voting for senators, 18 no more alcohol, 19 women get the right to vote, don't forget that. Um, we also know that uh, before we got into the war, it was the sinking of the Lusitania um, that pushed us along with the Zimmerman note. So anyway, all right, I hit it pretty fast. I know um, I was trying to go pretty quick and hit the highlights, but you're going to do great, especially if you did your study guide and paid attention while doing your study guide. So best of luck, everybody.